It's the day before auditions and I'm getting all set up here, our registration table, our social distancing chairs, and I thought I would just sit down and talk to you for a minute while you're sitting here waiting for your audition time. Number one, I am so glad that you are here. Now, disclaimer, what I'm about to say is based on how I like to run my productions, how I like to interact with the kids as a director. This is not what every theater director, how they see a production, how they see their cast. This is just me. The minute you walk through that door, you are auditioning. So, Keep that in mind when you walk in, it's how you interact and how you behave and how you treat the people at the registration desk. It's how you act and interact with the people that are sitting next to you waiting to go in. You are always auditioning. Now, if I walk out here and I see you well, that's all right, mama. That's all right with you. running up and down this hall, or standing up on this chair or being too loud, I'm going to take notice. I always tell my kids, every time you walk into this theater, you are auditioning me. And that goes through the entire production, whether we're in music rehearsals, blocking rehearsals, how you act, it matters. You're always auditioning. Auditioning for musical theater is very unique in that it's not like The Voice or American Idol. You don't have to be the best singer. You just have to be the best fit for the role. For instance, a little while ago I did a show called Into the Woods and I had this fabulous singer and she's experienced and she's wonderful and she nails everything. And she really wanted the part of the witch in Into the Woods. Well, when we got down to casting, it came down to which of these girls do we have that can hit a high C? Now, Cinderella's song has a high C in it, and we had to choose which of the girls had that high C. And the little girl that wanted the witch had the high C, so she was cast as Cinderella this happens. You have to be a good fit for the character. Another instance is when we did Lion King and we were looking for our Rafiki and I had two very strong belters. But one of the girls had a little bit of a raspiness to her voice and I didn't want Rafiki to have a raspiness to her voice. So little things like that come into play when you are trying to cast a role in musical theater. And the cast list. The waiting. The waiting. The waiting. The waiting. That was my computer, it just fell. The waiting, the waiting, the waiting, the waiting. The cast list comes out. Please know that your importance in the show is not listed in order from top to bottom. No way. Not everyone gets cast in the role that they want, their preferred role. That's how it happens. But let me give you a little bit of insight. A big musical number that doesn't have a chorus behind it, eh, it's just not the same. It's not as powerful. Or, we only have one dancer or two dancers during a big musical production. Sometimes the stage can seem empty without an ensemble behind them dancing. I need capable, dependable, and talented kids in my ensemble. And I depend on my ensemble a lot to bring those scenes together. And truth be told, the ensemble works just as hard as the leads and most of the time has as much or if not more stage time than the leads do. Some of the shows that I have had the most fun in have been when my name has been lower on the cast list. So, 
there's a couple of things I want you to know before you're waiting to go into your audition. Again, this is just for my point and how I view my productions. This is my mindset going in. So break a leg and go be a light.